RTX 9060 gets launched and it's not very inspiring. Intel's inspiring nobody right now. And AMD switching up their socket. AM6 incoming. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Wednesday, August 6, 2025. And we're going to start off today with a little bit of news that came out right after we published hot news yesterday, and that is the launch of the RX 9060 non XT GPU that coincided with a driver release from AMD. This GPU has fewer cores than the 9060 XT, which was not the rumor that we heard yesterday, but it does make it so that the 9060 is going to be slightly worse than the 9060 XT, along with lower memory speed, therefore lower memory bandwidth, and kind of having a lower setup overall. Now, the thing to note about this is that AMD is pivoting this as a 1080p card, as opposed to the 1440p card for the 9060 XT. However, in case you're wondering, what's gonna be the price? None. It's going to be only in system integrators or OEM desktops. This is not going to be available for the DIY market. You likely will not be able to pick up an RX 9060 anytime soon, so you don't have to worry about the price. It's just going to come in pre-built, and then we'll have to figure out what the heck's going on with the value proposition there. Except for AMD does look to make it so that it can't quite get up to a 9060 XT because reports are coming out that they are limiting the software overclocking on the 9060 so that it can't go and punch its big brother and make it so that it's a better value with reports being that the boost clock and everything that's set up with the software activated OC mode only increase clock speeds by 10 megahertz. I mean, that's one way to partition it. It's capable of more, but they're not gonna give it to you because they gotta segmentize and make the extra money somehow. Let me know what you think of the RX 9060 non-XT GPU. Is this scratching your itch? Is it not good enough? Obviously, we have to wait and see what the prices on pre-builds are gonna be, but in case you're shopping around online, and you might need to shop at a place that's not your home country, you should definitely check out today's video sponsor. How many times have you been itching to watch a show online only find out it's no longer available in your region? If you're like me and a ton of other people, it happens a lot. Thankfully, VPNs like today's sponsor Surfshark are here to save the day and keep us binging on our laptops. While Surfshark is more than just a VPN offering tons of ways to keep you and your data safe online, it still does all the things you'd expect from a VPN and it does them well. Like I mentioned earlier, having Surfshark Surfshark to transport me to whatever region I need to track down my shows is great. Or I'm having to buy things for my upcoming move to South Africa, and a lot of shops don't allow me to do that here in the US, so I just use Surfshark to make it so that I look like I'm in South Africa, making my job a lot easier. And when it comes to my data, Surfshark also makes sure that it stays mine. They don't collect my personal info, online activity, or my location. Surfshark also boasts industry-leading security with AES-256 GCM encryption and compliance with the strictest security measures. So now not only is Surfshark not accessing my data, but I know no one else is too. I'm looking at you, Kyler. Stay out of my green M&M folder. I mean it. It's his. It's his green M&M folder and I stole it. Something to set Surfshark above and beyond when it comes to VPNs is their option to use them on unlimited devices. With just one account, you could set up and use Surfshark on as many devices as you can, which is great for larger families like mine. And if you want something a little more extra, you can opt for Surfshark One, where on top of a premium VPN, you get a ton of other security features bundled in like Surfshark Alert. This feature notifies you the moment your email, ID, cards, or other personal data is leaked online. So now, Guthix forbid any of my many OSRS account passwords get leaked, I'll know before the NPC aggression at Sand Crabs times out. If you know, you know. I, I don't know. Do yourself and your browsing a favor and check out Surfshark today via the link in the description below. Once you get set up, take your time to try it out. And if you're not really riding the Surfshark wave, they back you up with a 30 day money back guarantee. Thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. I know that segue to the sponsor seemed weird that like you would be shopping in your non-home country. I'm trying to buy stuff for a upcoming move to South Africa and I am having the hardest time uh, doing e uh, online shopping, not being in the country and so I've had had to use a VPN to actually allow myself to, to do it. So that's that explains the segue. And I'm gonna explain PCI Express 8.0 to you right now because the certification for this has been finalized with knowing exactly how fast PCI Express 8.0 is going to be and it's supposed to be releasing by 2028. You might be thinking, I only have Gen 5. We're 6 and 7. They're, they're on their way. 6 is starting to pop up in a server environments. 7 is uh, being produced and now 8 is going to have 256 gigatransfers per second, allowing for 1 terabyte per second of link speed. So that makes it on a full 16 length 
plain PCI Express slot, you're gonna be able to get one terabyte per second of bandwidth, which is the equivalent of what you can get on an RTX 4090's memory. And one of the reasons that they're talking about making this is that it's gonna make it so that it's better for AI and machine learning, and it's a cost-effective, high bandwidth, low latency, IO interconnect to meet industry standards. And if you're matching memory speeds on high-end graphics cards, which likely, in 2028, we're gonna be a little bit past, but still can make it so that there's easier things like memory swapping and having multiple GPUs and communicating via PCI Express could get a little bit simpler and a little bit quicker. And that's what I want Reese to do right now, give you the quick deals. He's not gonna know that I said that, so let's see what he does anyways. Yo, welcome back to Yifty Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet and I'll jump straight into it. First up today, we have the Epo Maker TH80 SE 75% hard swappable mechanical keyboard going for only $44.99 with included promo code, making it 50% off or $45 off. But then next up, we have the Intel Core i5-12600KF going for only $99.99, making it $92.91 off. And then lastly today, we have this Gigabyte B650 Eagle AX AM5 ATX motherboard for only $109.99, making it $60 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next, I'm gonna hand you back to bread for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, turns out we're getting a bum deal when it comes to Intel because Reuters is reporting that as previously reported, Intel is struggling with their 18A foundry production, specifically with producing their upcoming Panther Lake chips and that the yields on these chips is incredibly low. Reports are that it's just 10%. However, Intel has come out and denied that claim saying that the numbers are higher than that, but not providing what actually their yield numbers are, which is very typical when it comes to rumors, not actually giving credence to it by responding. However, this is something that continuously comes up from significant sources, from reputable journalists who are finding out that Intel is having some internal struggles and they're reporting on it and Intel saying, no, we're not. We don't know what you're talking about. And as Ars Technica points out, it would be easier to believe Intel if we hadn't had over a decade of them doing this with us, whether that's the transition to 14 nanometers from 2013 to 2015, or everything with the transition to 10 nanometers, where they constantly said everything's on track, and then they had to keep slipping and pushing the deadline back because they actually didn't have anything figured out. The amount of times that this channel's been around to hear that 10 nanometers was coming soon and everything's on track is a hilarious amount. And so it feels like the exact same playbooks being pulled out for Intel right now, where we're getting behind the scenes reports indicating that Intel is struggling and they are just saying, nah, uh we're not, even though they have plenty of history indicating that that is exactly what they're going to say. Now, it's obviously not quite clear how this is gonna shake out. I'm hoping that Intel stays performing well, Panther Lake is successful, that they continue to have the money to compete against the likes of AMD, who is definitely going to get too big for their britches at some point in the future with all of their uh, extra market share that they have. But that's not the only downfall part that Intel has to worry about because they just got their credit downgraded as well from the credit agency Fitch, marking them as triple B instead of triple B plus and making it so that their outlook is negative just due to economic factors. They're not in a good position. They're carrying too much debt. And so Fitch has made it so they're only two points above junk status when it comes to their credit rating. And it's not looking good overall. Looks like they're struggling internally. It looks like people are noticing that and pointing out that, hey, you're, you're struggling even if you're saying you're not. And so we don't believe you and we believe that you're actually going to have a hard time in the future. Obviously, competition would be good for the market. I would love to see Intel compete with AMD. However, it's looking less and less likely that that is going to be a certain future moving forward. And it looks like maybe it's AMD versus ARM and NVIDIA and what they're coming up with and Apple and what they're doing with the Apple Silicon. And that's just it. Those are our competitors. And that's a doomy gloomy future I'm talking about right there. But let's talk about a little happier future, which is AMD and their upcoming AM6 socket for you to put your processor into. We're getting reports coming out that the AM6 socket is supposed to have significantly more pins coming in at 2100 versus the roughly 1700 pins that are currently on AM5. So that's a lot of little uh, precious delicates on your motherboard, making it easier for you to mess something up and have to RMA it. But the good news that comes along with this is that it's also being reported that the AM6 socket is gonna retain compatibility for AM5 coolers. So you're gonna be able to use what you currently have on the next generation of motherboards. And in case you're wondering, when am I gonna have to upgrade to AM6? Reports currently are indicating that it's going to be with the Zen 7 launch of CPU. So we're anticipating Zen 6 should 
should happen likely sometime in 2026, keeping PCI Express 5.0 and DDR5. However, with the launch of Zen 7, we're expecting to get the AM6 platform with PCI Express 6.0 and DDR6 RAM being included with that. So that's anticipated to be roughly around 2027, maybe late parts of 2027, potentially 2028. It's not quite clear when that's gonna play out, but AMD has committed that they're gonna support the current socket at least through 2025 and likely going into 2026. It looks probable that they're gonna keep holding on to that, keeping their promise of giving us multiple generations on the same socket. However, just like what we saw with the previous generation, even when they moved on to AM5, they kept releasing new chips for AM4, the 5700X3D, the XT CPUs that came out very recently. AMD has had a good history of supporting this stuff, hopefully that continues even if their competition's floundering and they have fewer reasons to try to compete because you're just gonna upgrade to AMD anyways. And I'm gonna read your comments anyways. Let's see what you had to say in yesterday's episode of Hot News. We got Asus saying, love what AMD is doing. I hope that Intel can pull something off though. We need good competition. We're on the we're on the same boat here, my friend. And then OTG saying, if that 9060 non-XT is sold for more than $200, it will likely be a DOA product. I've got news for you. As reported at the beginning, it's not gonna be sold separately, but also so uh, if you look at market share, AMD's GPUs are all DOA products, unfortunately. And then we got Lo-Fi Lummy asking, can anyone tell me, is it worth upgrading from an RX 7900 XTX 24 gigabyte to the newer RX 9070 XT 16 gigabyte? So as I typically answer this when it comes to people asking this kind of question in our PC building live streams, which we're gonna be doing one on Friday in case you wanna check that out, worth is a very subjective question. Whether or not something's worth it is typically typically determined by what are you trying to get out of it? Are you just looking for the fastest gaming performance possible? In most scenarios, the 9070 XT does look like it outperforms the 7900 XTX. That is also doubly so when it comes to things like ray tracing and having all of the extra goodness for that or things like FSR 4. However, there is the possibility that you might run into scenarios where you're VRAM limited on the 16 gigabytes where you wouldn't have been with the 7900 XTX. It's not very likely, especially if you're gaming at that 1440p 4K medium to high setup. It's not likely that you're gonna run out of VRAM there, but Personally, for me, if I was currently on a 7900 XTX, I would not be looking to upgrade to a 9070 XT. It's not gonna be enough to radically change the gaming experience. It would just be, if you watch the numbers, it's gonna be higher on the 9070 XT, which is not what I typically advise people to do when it comes to upgrading. I like to see upgrades that make it a fundamentally different experience. You're either running at a higher resolution or you're running at higher settings significantly or you're running at a significantly higher frame rate, a noticeable change going from 60 to 144 FPS or going from 1080p to 1440p. Going from the 7900 XTX to the 9070 XT is not gonna give you any of that. It's gonna give you slightly faster gaming performance and that you could possibly tell, but a lot of times I think uh, most people think that because the number is higher, it feels different. But in reality, if you turn the numbers off, it feels about the same, especially if you turn on things like VSync and otherwise. Let me know if you agree with that take. Probably don't, but that's fine. I'll talk to you tomorrow on Hot News for the things we do here.